2009, the bloodiest election-related massacre and the single deadliest event for journalists in history happened in Maguindanao. 58 people were slaughtered, including 32 journalists. After the carnage, they were buried in a prepared excavation, including their vehicles. The Philippines was placed third as the most dangerous country for journalists after war-torn Iraq and Syria. President Aquino vowed to serve justice. However, after five years, it has remained elusive. Worse, less than a week before the fifth anniversary of the so-called Ampatuan massacre, two witnesses were silenced by bullets in Sharif Agua. Karapatan reports there are at least 152 victims of extrajudicial killings, 18 victims of enforced disappearances, and thousands more victims of other forms of human rights violations. Zero. Wala po tayong nakikitang aksyon na ginagawa ng pamahalaan. Human rights groups blame the weak courts and the Aquino administration that crime perpetrators go unpunished, contributing to the chilling climate of fear and the culture of injustice. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. Five years since the gruesome election-related killing that also slaughtered 32 journalists known as the Maguindanao Massacre. No single suspect is punished to date. So we ask tonight, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao Massacre case? Good evening, I'm Rodney Pomoseno, and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight in our discussion is University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication Associate Dean, Professor Danilo Arau. Danny, Professor Danny, good evening. Yes, hey, good evening. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for joining us again here on the show. Yeah. Um, your initial thoughts regarding this debate question. Do you think the government uh, is failing uh, in, the, in the handling of the Maguindanao massacre case? Definitely, it is failing. Uh, it's good that you invited me, even if I'm not a lawyer, mm -hmm. because from a non-lawyer's perspective, mm -hmm. from a journalism educator's perspective, I can tell you that the culture of, of impunity remains mm -hmm. and that there are still 25 journalists killed since mm -hmm. uh, Aquino assumed office in 2010. Mm -hmm. So that's about six journalists being killed every year. Mm -hmm. And these are work-related killings. So when we talk about the Maguindanao massacre, we have to look at the context in which it operates. Mm -hmm. So the brazenness of murder, still happens. And there are 222 extrajudicial killings uh, that happened since 2010 also. Mm -hmm. So it's more than just the issue of whether or not the wheels of justice are turning slowly or much slower than expected because it's the culture of impunity that should be the focus of our discussion here. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, Professor Ara. On the opposing side is the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Loretta Eta Rosales. Ma'am, good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, th thank you for joining us. Uh, Ma'am, uh, your thoughts, your initial reaction on, on this question. You think the government is failing uh, regarding this case? Am I supposed to oppose him? <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, yes. put it this way. Apparently, it does look like nothing's happening because there's no conviction. After yes. five years, there's no conviction. Mm -hmm. So people are impatient. Ano nga ba nangyayari? Mm -hmm. But let's look at it first. No, mm -hmm. It's a difficult problem. There are so many accused and uh, there are so many who are victims. And there is a flawed criminal justice system before us. Mm -hmm. So these are the factors that we have to consider. Now, I'm not going to say it's a total failure. I will say that it is apparently failing because after five years, there has yet been no conviction. Mm -hmm. But there are those that have already been uh, arrested and are mm -hmm. in jail the principal suspects are actually in jail. Mm -hmm. We are just waiting for them to be prosecuted and finally convicted. Mm -hmm. Pero nakakulong sila. Okay. 
Right. No, it's not as if they right. are at large. And I'm talking about the principal uh, actors. All right. Okay. So let's start off. Uh, now it's been five years, as yeah, we mentioned. That's cool. um, so let's talk. Let's talk about uh, your, I guess, your first, your personal assessment. No, your, I guess, your personal assessment of satisfaction. Well, okay, um, let's, let's try uh, to yeah. quantify uh, yeah. what uh, Eta said a while ago regarding mm -hmm. the sheer number of those who are accused. Well, the number of dead, we all know, it's mm -hmm. 58, right? Yeah. Now we're talking of 194 who are accused of the murder, mm -hmm. uh, but only. A slight majority is in jail. There are about 84 or 85 who are still at large right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. And the wheels of justice are sometimes turning toward the wrong direction because mm -hmm. 41, 41, mm -hmm. is, uh, 41 of the uh, accused are actually granted bail. Although the bail is set at around 11 million pesos at, at the cost of 200,000 per yeah. count of murder. Yes. So it's really quite baffling. You have, you have a problem with that? With the, the Definitely, I have a problem with that because we're talking of brazen murder mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be an unbailable crime. You're the lawyer and you're supposed yes. to know that it's an unbailable crime. And mm -hmm. here is a situation where you have 41 mm -hmm. accused being granted bail. Although the, the, the uh, concept of non-bailable doesn't mean yes. that you cannot, you cannot have bail. Yeah, that's it, true. It because means that the, the presumption has been shifted. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the premise is that there's not sufficient evidence allegedly, at least yeah. for the police officers who mm -hmm. were there at the checkpoint. Right. But uh, it already gives undue prejudice as to how the, just, the criminal justice system will work in the case of the Ampatuan uh, massacre. Uh, Mameta, you so think that's that there's undue prejudice right there? Just... The, just because of the fact that, uh, let's say, bail was granted to these... Uh, oh, yeah, these they people? can post bail, no? All, yeah. uh, all 41 you, of them. Do yeah. you think there was undue prejudice there? Um, no, um, because these are the policemen. And, uh, you know, I have actually spoken to the wives, okay. the spouses of the policemen, mm -hmm. much, much earlier. And, you know, believe it or not, a number of them were mistaken. There were mistake. There were names. Mistaken that were, identity. Oh, mistaken identity. Because uh, some of them were supposed to have been, uh, at the time when it uh, happened, were supposed to have been in Jeddah. Mm. They were not there. So whether or not, this, of course, this thing has, still has to go through the process of litigation. But uh, you must see the degree of mm. involvement of these policemen. Ma police yane. Nandun sila. Utusan sila. So. Parang kanya eh. They just uh, move in accordance with what the rules are. I mean, if it's yeah. the mayor that's ordering them. I had spoken to the Secretary of Justice much, much earlier regarding this matter. And to me, I, my position, my, real, my own position is focus on the principals. Mm -hmm. Focus on the principal suspects. Mm -hmm. And if you can bail out, you know, some of these people uh, who were involved for one reason or another, then give them that bail. Um, they have not yet been convicted, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Definitely. they could be incidental, ang kanilang kwan, mm -hmm. ang uh, involvement nila. But there has been stigma already with the children, the mm -hmm. family, the and spouses. And obviously, if you mention yeah. the name. And then, uh, oh, yeah. baka ganun even if, na. Even then, if there is a presumption of innocence, there, there's... Yes, yeah. but the, because they were already involved and the, the father was arrested. Mm -hmm. So we must, again, the humane aspect of it, I can understand how difficult it is, but remember that let us focus on the principles, Pro Pro the Professor, mastermind. But this Pro sets Pro a very yeah. dangerous precedent mm -hmm. uh, insofar as uh, culpability of the police is concerned. It's true, these are mostly police officers who are following, could, orders. Who are following orders, but yeah. the fact that you follow the orders, uh, even if it's unlawful, means that uh, you have some degree of culpability. Professor, uh, let me ask you, where do you think the problem lies in this whole process? Where do you think... What's the crowd? Is it, do you think, do we go straight to the administration? Because goes, this happened before his, his term, right? So, that's uh, true. But do you, do you think that uh, uh, it's really his problem? The, well, the it goes straight problem? to Malacanang in the sense that both... You think that Gloria that's, Gloria the, you think yes. that's the main issue? Definitely. Both Gloria Macapagalaroyo and Noy Noy Aquino have not had a good relationship with the media. They just mm. wanted to focus on the good news. Mm. They looked at the press as just simply an accomplice to yeah. so-called national development, whatever that means. Yeah. So therefore, there is no clear statement from the palace, particularly the president himself mm. right now, to, to, uh, to, to resolve the problem. Uh, because to the credit at least to, uh. of uh, then-President Fidel Ramos, there were fewer journalists killed, killed during his time because he said that this thing would have to stop and that as a confidence building measure in the peace talks, I'm sure Eta mm. is aware of this, uh, he 
repealed the anti-subversion law. Now, mm. what did the president do right now, the current president? Mm. He has castigated the media over and over and over again, in, and he has even come up with a policy pronouncement saying that the media killings are not really work related and that uh, not, not his not, not his work yeah least. i'm sorry uh, it's not related to his work you yeah mean, it's not saying. related it's uh. not done in the line of duty but of course we all know that's not true uh. please bear with me as i cite two figures sure. number one 217 journalists were killed from 1996 up to the present and out of 217 145 hmm proved to be work-related according to the study of the Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Even the Committee to Protect Journalists and the, and the Reporters on Frontier also point out the fact that there were media killings uh, that were done in the line of the duty. Line of duty. Mm -hmm. The numbers may vary because of methodology, but the numbers are consistent in the sense that there were journalists who were killed in the line of duty. Mm. It's an, it is unfortunate that the current president right now is looking at this issue from a myopic perspective and he clearly doesn't understand what media means. Mameta, do you think that the, the problem really lies uh, on the president himself or the administration itself? Or do you, do you think that it's, it's really more in the, the way our wheels of justice is Yes, it, yeah, it's the wheels of justice systemic. And of course the president is there, he could probably do more. Mm. He could be more sensitive. I mean, I appreciate mm. what uh, Danny is saying. No? He could probably be more sensitive to, you know, the, the issues about the media killings. Mm -hmm. I know because I've been talking to the media people. I, I often yeah. talk to the media people and I know who, who they are and I sympathize with them. So maybe a more sensitivity on the part of the uh, but However, do you, do you believe the statement that it, it boils down, this whole delay the, the of justice is, 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 is the fault of the president? No, 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 it's not the fault of the president. It's the criminal justice system. It's the whole system that is at stake. Systemic and problema rito. But then it, uh, and, doesn't and it all boil down to the top? But, on now top? You, but the president can have more resolve, more determination in pushing. Look, if I were the president, I'd say, I want this Ampatuan massacre. You so, know, so that solved. way. Within but, this period of time, and I want you guys, etc., etc. But by saying that, he can't uh, do it because the wheels of justice are flat. Um, he, he knows <laughs> that the wheels of justice are, yeah, they're uh, flat tires, no? Uh, oh, pero, uh, I think we can do something about improving this whole thing, if, right, I, if you don't mind, no? Yes. Oh, for instance, monitoring. Okay. There should be more regular monitoring, mm. and he can do that. Mm. He can get his uh, agent, his uh, communication. Uh, mechanisms, media, uh -huh. yeah, the media, to ensure that there's really monitoring, regular monitoring of what's going on, that's one, and make sure that the people understand why. And why, why it's, oh, why why it's it that is. long? For instance, ako masama ang loob ko kasi I, I felt so bad for the, the, um, the testigos who mm -hmm. were killed. Yeah. No? Yeah. They're poor people, and they, they work with the mayor. Mm. They should have been given the, the witness protection. protection program, more protection. Ma Ma Meta, that witness protection uh, uh, program yes, at, at, at this point, and let's, 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 let's pause there, no? the, the, mm -hmm. about the protection of the witnesses. Uh, but in uh, the meantime, we have to take a short break. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, you can join the debate via Facebook at facebook.com slash opposing views on 9TV, or tweet your thoughts at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV Magindanao. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. We have with us uh, UP Professor Danilo Arau and CHR Chairperson Eta Rosales. And our debate question for tonight, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao massacre case? And uh, right before the break, we were discussing whether it's fair to point out that it really boils down to blaming President Aquino and his, and his administration uh, regarding the, uh, I guess, slowness of uh, the wheels of justice. Uh, Mameta, I'll, uh, just before the break, you were, you, were just, you were saying that we really can't blame the president. However, he can do much more. No, uh, he you can were do saying, much yeah. more, but you uh, can't blame him mm. as if he were responsible for this whole apparent failure. No, I'm not mm. saying that it's a total failure. You can't blame yet, on one no? person. Yeah. No, you can't blame a person. It, it's, uh, although he can play a you know, definite 
good, effective role because he's the leader of the nation. Mm -hmm. And certainly he can generate energies and he can motivate his whole machinery of government to focus on this, mm -hmm. particularly the, the justice system. Now, I was talking about the monitoring, for instance. It is important for re a mechanism that will report to the public what is happening in the Ampatuan massacre. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that yeah. and media can play a very good role here, mm -hmm. but not just media, but civil society groups. They, should, they can be informed, you know, civil society groups are much more, at least some of them are much more sophisticated than, you know, just yes. ranting and frothing in the mouth. Yes. A lot of them are studying, you know, the rule of law, are studying uh, the questions of the, mm. the entire procedure of the litigation, mm. and they can, in fact, monitor social media. You know, social media is positive in the sense that at least there's a lot of transparency and a they're given a, a chance to talk. Yeah, yeah. but they, it, it's a lot of chatter. Too. Yeah. But they can, in fact, be used to improve, to in, be more instructive. Okay, taking from that, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Danny, do you think it's uh, pr uh, President Aquino's main problem is just the fact that he doesn't monitor and doesn't inform? Or do you think it goes beyond that? Well, it all boils down to two words, command responsibility. Okay. And that's the reason why we use two words to refer to him as impunity king. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the sense that, uh, well, to that. Yeah, uh, in the sense that what we have to remember here is that there's lack of political will on the part of the current administration headed by the president. So no it's less. not just a question of him failing to communicate and failing to inform the public. It's not a failure of communication because you already have a three-headed hydra in the press office of the press uh, of, mm. of Malacanang. So mm. they are doing everything they can to inform mm. uh, people. But of course, the kind but of information they? is, the, the kind of information that's delivered is somewhat flawed in the it's sense little, that... Uh, there's a little uh, yeah. Malacanang spin. Yeah, it's oh. skewed toward uh, Malacanang. Well, oh. that's black propaganda for you. But oh. the problem here lies in the fact that as far as the culture of impunity is concerned, mm -hmm. it still persists. And that is where we root our assessment that there is total failure in the Maguindanao massacre case. It's not just the issue of the slow wheels of justice. It has something to do with a bigger contextual issue, which is the culture of impunity. It's quite systemic and no amount of cosmetic changes like monitoring hmm. or improving the but, justice system are, can change that. Uh, Professor Dan, there are legal realities. Like, for example, the defense team yeah. uh, uh, pulled out. No? And, uh, and then alas also... Chairman Eta, if she feels that this is kind of a delaying tactic. But do you think that this is a delaying tactic on yeah. the part of the, uh, the Ampatuans? Uh, do yeah, you think because, it's just delaying tactic? And, because it works in their favor. And it's a legal, it's a legal de delaying tactic. It's yeah, part it's a legal of our tactic. Uh, criminal justice mm -hmm. system. Yeah, and yeah. all the more that we need to ensure that the culture of impunity will really end. It may sound like a very lofty and too idealistic uh, mm -hmm. perspective, but the point here, ladies and gentlemen, is that what we need to do is to demand accountability mm -hmm. from no less than the president himself because by virtue of command responsibility, mm -hmm. he is supposed to be, you know, overlooking these things and he is supposed to be, uh, you know, cracking the whip, so to speak, uh, on those uh, who are delaying. But, but, you know, there, or, there are a lot of things happening in the country. Yeah. Do you think that he can actually monitor day to day and really sort of like well, take actually, each step and, and, and push Push the prosecutors, for example, and the, the fiscal. Do you think that's, that's realistic? Well, as a communications professor, I can tell you that it can start by just simply coming up with a strongly worded statement mm -hmm. denouncing the culture of impunity and that as far as the mm -hmm. press is concerned, there is a conscious effort for him to realize the importance of media and that the method of shaping public opinion requires creating an atmosphere that's conducive to press freedom. Unfortunately, mm. for the current president right now, he doesn't know how the media works. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, uh, Chairman, yeah. yes. Uh, go, yeah, go, go I, I, well, I think that, uh, of course, the media can be very, very helpful and very mm. useful. That's why, as I was saying, uh, I don't think that the problem here is only a question of monitoring. All that I'm saying is monitoring is important in helping society understand because uh, the government has an accountability to let the people know exactly mm. what the score is. So at least if they know, yeah. uh, at the and very they, least, they, they're, they're appraised. They, they, yes. they, they, they know that something's the, happening. Yeah. That something's happening. Because I'm not saying that it's a total failure because it's eh. mm. They're actually there, but it's so slow. The, you know, the wheels of yeah. justice are so slow. And what should happen is that 
people should be educated on why it is so slow mm. so that something yeah. can be done about it and then you pressure pressure government pressure the particular agencies involved and get the people to participate okay, i'm going uh, i'm going to address yeah. one point which i think con is contributing to the slowness no and there are issues of bribery yeah. among yes. the prosecutors all right is yes. this now do you feel uh, chairman et and i'll ask you uh, professor danny do you think that this is the i mean there's a prosecution witness uh, named uh, lakmudin saliao uh, said she was uh, tasked to bribe the prosecutors and even a justice under secretary do you think this is Contributing to the delays? Of course, uh, yes. of course. It's mm. contributing to... Good God. I mean, just the believe it, mm. you know, incident the other day. I was so shocked at it because mm. I was we were still busy with the police in the, you know, the intelligence police who were torturing the wheel mm. of justice. In other words, what am I trying to say? It's a whole lot of, you know, mm. defect within the criminal justice system. So I think that maybe people up there can actually focus on think nothing. What can we do? Let's focus, and I keep on saying this, let's focus on ensuring that prosecution, there is certainty of prosecution, there is certainty of conviction. Dito sa Maguindanao, Ampatuan, I call it Ampatuan Massacre, yes. no, not Maguindanao. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ampatuan Massacre, let's focus on that and get the whole people, everybody, communities to focus on that. And we, I think that you are going to generate a lot of positive energy, and at least you can complete this and have a closure with respect isn't to the, that. But isn't the bribery, though, uh, a, uh, a clear sign that the government is failing? Because why is this happening? Yes, the, the, yes. Mm. The government, well, the, the system is failing. It's systemic. Mm. Okay. And the government is part of that, no? Yeah. So the system is failing until such time that you are able to address this. It, it's going to be more of the, the yeah, same yeah, do, thing. Do, do over you think and over that again. it all boils down to us blaming uh, President Pino? I, I, no, I. Because he is, uh, as, as mentioned by Professor Danny, you know, command responsibility. Yeah, it yeah, all boils down to. Of course, of course, command yeah. responsibility. And he can do a lot. Mm. to be more decisive and to resolve it. Mm. All that I am saying is we can't blame him alone mm. because okay. he yeah. inherited this and it's a systemic structural mm. problem. Danny? Yeah, but we have to remember that it happened November 23, 2009 in the waning years, mm. uh, months of, mm. the, of the Arroyo administration. And the fact that it's been five years already is already yeah. frustrating by itself. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember also what we talked about a while ago. 41, again, I repeat, 41 has been, uh, have been okay. uh, granted, uh, you know, petition for bail. Mm. So it's quite frustrating. While the but do you think amount of bail that, is too by much. By that yeah. bail alone, do you think that that's a failure in the part of the government? It's an indication of yeah. how brazen uh, the, the wheels of justice have become. It's slow by itself, and then there are mixed signals that are being sent because, uh, to the well, public. As you mentioned, I'm, I'm a lawyer. Yes. And, uh, and and I know, and sometimes it's to handle one case, for example, one case of murder yeah. is very, very difficult already and takes sometimes 10 years, we know it, 20 years sometimes, and sometimes there's, there's never even justice. No? We're talking about 58, 58 cases yes. here, 58 individual murders and like 100 plus accused. Mm -hmm. So given, those, given that complexity, given that circumstance, don't you think that the government is doing whatever it can under the circumstances, of course, as mentioned by Chairman Eta, and again, I sympathize for yes. to all those the victims, of course, absolutely. But there, there is a complexity here, and and there's a principle in law that we'd rather that a guilty person be freed rather than yes, that an, an, an a guilty person go to yeah, jail. Uh, an innocent yeah, person, yeah, an innocent yeah, person be, go to jail. So we have to be really careful in the the prosecution and, uh, of course, the um, you know uh, pinning blame uh, to to certain people. Don't you think that? Given the complexity, it's just fair that the government is taking this long. Well, it's like this. Uh, it's a very complex case, mm. I would agree. But the problem here is that, uh, again, we go back to the culture of impunity, wherein there is, seem there is seemingly a mixed signal that's being sent uh, by the powers that be right now. Mm. And now, talking about the law, of course, it will really take a very, very long time, perhaps mm. even beyond our lifetime, uh, to, to really resolve the case, given that uh, murder can be... Uh, a complex uh, mm -hmm. issue. I, but the problem oh, here sure. has yeah, to do sure. with the fact that uh, there is not much effort being done by that, both the prosecution and the defense. Yes, go ahead. Can I ask a question? Sure. How, how would you look at it if we focus, you know, there's more concerted effort in focusing at the principles, 
this bribery, you denounce it, you expose it, you denounce it, you prosecute them, you arrest whoever they are. But to me, the, the, the possibility of solving the crime, the massacre, rests on, the, okay. rests on our focus on, you know, the principles. So we refer to the Ampatuan uh, I'm families, referring right? to them. There are eight in the members in yeah. the family. Now, this, this senior Ampatuan wants to bail out. I'm against that. Yeah. The members of the Ampatuan, well, no bail. No Para bail. Dito mm. sa ito. The reason I say, I'm not, I'm not saying all 41 policemen can be bailed out, but definitely I am more inclined to say that, once again, let's uh, go through that process and let's find out who they are, who can be bailed out. Well, but let's focus on the principals because they are the mastermind, or the mastermind is one among them. And this system, this family system, its dynastic rule have been there for quite a long time. No? Well, it sets a very dangerous precedent at, uh, in the sense that once you free, well, assuming that they get freed really, uh, well, there's nothing that would prevent the others uh, from be, following suit. Because we all know the legal maneuverings that are being done by both the prosecution and the defense to ensure that they get their point across. Mm -hmm. Now, once somebody gets freed, it sets a dangerous precedent for all the other 194 accused, as well as those who are still at large. Mm -hmm. So the failure of the system has to do with the fact that it's not the issue of most of them, of most of the 194 being in jail, mm -hmm. but the fact that there are still about 84 or 85 still at large. And we cannot find them. Yeah, but there's still there's still the rule, rule of law. Yeah, we have a principle that uh, everyone is presumed innocent, yes, right? Before being proven guilty. And uh, let's face it, there's also a political angle here. So if I was the maybe political en enemy of the Ampatuans, I can always say, oh, they did it, they did it, right? Yeah, so definitely. It's, it's possible, right? So it, it's highly possible that the accusation is, is political. So don't you think that we should give that kind of leeway? And I know it's been five years and it's very difficult for, uh, for those, the victims especially, and the relatives of the victims. But don't you think that we, given that angle, that it's political, that we have to be, we're treading a very, you know, thin, we're treading on thin ice and we should be really careful rather than, well, rather than, uh, you know, go ahead. Again, I'm playing devil's advocate here yeah, just to... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Okay, in terms of scenario, Let's talk about a situation wherein one of the principals would get convicted mm -hmm. in advance. Mm -hmm. So maybe it sends a signal that, okay, uh, there is something that's working insofar right. as the case is concerned. Mm -hmm. But right now, but the there's nothing that's happening right now. And uh, we're talking about uh, the granting of bail. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the latest development insofar right. as the Ampatuan massacre is concerned. Okay. Quite unfortunate. I, I think right. that uh, the CSOs, the civil society mm -hmm. groups, and the academe can, yeah. in fact, be more helpful. Because, you know, when you see a failed criminal justice system, yung, yeah. uh, that one, that's where you motivate right. the yeah. positive energies of those right. who can, in fact. Yeah. That's why our college, so, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, why our college uh, is taking an official state, uh, just released an official statement uh, today mm -hmm. regarding the Ampatuan massacre, and we denounce the government for its failure. All right, uh, we need to take a short break. Uh, we'll talk about the so-called uh, impunity. Uh, when we return, you're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Still with us is the University of the Philippines College of Mass Communications Assist Associate Dean, Professor Danilo Arao. On the opposing side is the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Loretta Rosales. Our question, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao massacre case? Now, I'll uh, throw the question to uh, Chairman uh, Eta. Uh, Ma'am, do you trust the DOJ in handling this case? I trust... Um well, in terms of integrity, I trust Secretary of Justice uh, Laila de Lima. She's a very honest person, but she's got a bit too many on, a, you know, on her plate, her plate. Yeah. and she's having a difficult time. Um, if I were Secretary de Lima, I'd probably put a special team, you know, special mm. team, na independent. And uh, if you have to get experts from abroad, I'll get experts from abroad to help us mm. in this kind of thing because it is a very um, major and special case that has international repercussions. So if you were a betting woman, you, you'd place a bet on Secretary de Lima and, and the DOJ's prosecuting team? Um, 
I think they they <laughs> they deserve a chance. They or? deserve a chance, but I think that they should be beefed up more, okay. much much more. Professor Danny, your thoughts? <laughs> if you're a betting man, do, do you well? Do you trust the DOJ? First of point? all, I don't gamble. But okay. nevertheless, yeah. if yeah. I were to bet, uh, I would rather bet on the social movement, what uh, ETA describes as civil society organizations, pressuring the Department of Justice to do its work. Mm. Actually, to the credit of Secretary De Lima. Uh, as regards the Morong 43 case uh, mm -hmm. who were imprisoned yes. in February 2010, they were released December 2010. Mm -hmm. And there had been cases of some political prisoners like Erickson Acosta mm -hmm. and Kim Gargar who got freed mm -hmm. uh, because the wheels of justice worked in their favor. Mm -hmm. So it all boils down to how we can engage in pressure politics so that the Department of Justice and its affiliate agencies will mm -hmm also act favorably mm -hmm. on the Ampatuan massacre so that we can finally get that elusive justice. Mm -hmm. But again, I'll throw the question. Do you, do you trust the, the DOJ and its team in, in, in handling this case? No. You know, okay. All right, straight out answer. Um, Chairman Rosales, um, let's go to the extrajudicial uh, killings in the country. No? And you, are, you as the, the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, uh, mm -hmm. uh, have the have these cases of extrajudicial killings declined and do you think have, have we alleviated the fears of, of people no, uh, no, on the no. chilling uh, effect on journalists no we have not alleviated so it hasn't fears. declined still, well it has declined in the way for instance where you'd have less of these killings in a particular in, in period number. now in yeah. number than uh, during the time of uh, the, last the last administration where you had it you know, within a week, and dami, ganon, di ba? Yeah. So, you probably have less of that now, but the enforced disappearances has declined. The torture is still there. And it's not just the military or the police that are committing extrajudicial killings. You're talking private armies mm -hmm. of political warlords mm -hmm. who are actually responsible for a lot of these uh, media mm -hmm. killings that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. In other words, again, you go back to that whole system of um, parang the inability of, of government and its uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms to be able to protect. There is no security. Mm -hmm. I am saying that because we are investigating, we are an investigating authority. Yes. And for heaven's sakes, every so often, you get all these reports and you have to go and investigate. People do not feel secure in their own homes. But do you think that there's progress though, considering that there's a decline in the number of extrajudicial killings? Do you think that the, that's no, progress in itself? The decline is uh, very... Ganun eh, gumaganun siya. 222. Mm -hmm. oh, do you think it's, do you think it's worse? Do you no, think it's, well, it's not it's, worse. Uh, do you think it's worse? Well, for me, it's worse in the sense that we're not just talking of the numbers. Mm. Less human rights violations more doesn't mean that, yeah, doesn't mean that uh, things are much better. Yes, because yeah. the brazenness is still there. Okay, let's talk about numbers. Uh, Eta is correct in saying that yes, under the decline. Arroyo administration, there were 82 journalists killed in a span of nine years. Mm -hmm. We're talking of four years of the Aquino administration, 25 journalists were killed. If we do the math, it's an average of nine journalists killed under the previous administration mm. as opposed to six, six here, yeah. who were killed right now. Does, it, does that mean that things are better? Definitely yeah. not, because it doesn't matter if it's one or 100. Mm. Even the United Nations itself mentions that even if only one incident of human rights violation were to happen in a country, still it's still unacceptable mm -hmm. and should be the subject of worldwide condemnation, which is mm -hmm. what's happening to the Philippines right now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying six is not necessarily better? Yes, definitely. So, uh, so Chairman, it should be zero. Do you, do you, do you agree with that, though, that uh, there's not been any progress at all whatsoever under this administration? Because uh, uh, no, we voted, we voted uh, uh, Pinoy on yeah, that yeah, premise. Yeah. Huh? Come on, come on, let's yeah. look at it. Huh? Uh, the president has been able to impeach the chief justice mm. of the Philippines. The president has put the past president on trial. She's mm. on trial right now and has put to jail three senators mm -hmm. uh, on, because of the yes. DAF ca case. DAF case no? yeah. So, so th that's, that's a There record. is some progress. There's, yeah. there's progress there. Yeah. So I think, it's not do you think, some, can you say it's not better? Something, well, I don't know of any administration that has been able to do this. But I do agree. But I agree. But I do agree that the, the, the system the justice system is uh, still as bad yeah. as ever, Eta. and we should be concerned 
mm. with respect to what is happening. Okay. President, yeah. improvement I, though. There's, yeah. a, there's some improvements. Uh, well, you asked me a question a while ago. Uh, may mm -hmm. I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. Does, yeah. the, does the culture of impunity still remain in the Philippines? You know, I think there is a culture of impunity. Okay. That is what we are combating. Because that's what I keep on saying. Mm. Combat impunity. It has to stop right now. Uh, I just want to add. And it's happening under the Aquino administration. Yeah, it's happening under and the Aquino And he should be responsible for that culture of impunity, right? Yes. Of course he is okay, the leader. Thank you. But, but, thank you. But it's not, what I am saying is, let us um, not just blame the person because it is the system. So he is responsible is still, right? He, of course he has responsibility. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, of course he has responsibility. Hmm. And I think that he himself realizes that. Okay, mm -hmm. and he should recognize that. Does he recognize it uh, really? Uh, I think he, I think he does, except that he doesn't. Professor Nani, do you well, think that he's recognizing this? In his or? Quiet, okay, I in guess his, it yeah. all boils down to his recent statement regarding the media. Okay, he again for the nth time he castigated the media, media for, for reporting only the bad, the bad news. Yeah. And as far as do you think uh, that's a Kinnis, fair statement? Of course not, uh -huh. because uh, mm -hmm. well, media may have its own flaws, but. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as shaping public opinion is concerned, theoretically, mm -hmm. it still does that. But more important than the, than the workings of the press is the fact that he looks at the killings of journalists as mostly non-work related. Mm -hmm. He is still in a state of denial, ETA, and I don't know if you agree with me here, but the numbers would show that there are work-related killings, and he doesn't oh, yeah. recognize. He doesn't recognize that. Do, do you think that. he's in That's denial, the uh, Chairman? Do you think uh, he's in you denial? Know, I, that was supposed. He's supposed to have said that, then, no? Yeah, because yeah. he, he, he you that. know, let's be specific. He says that sometimes mm. the murders of journalists has to do with land dispute or even a love triangle. There is a tendency to trivialize media killings, uh, and as a journalist, mm. of course, I am deeply saddened and disappointed, but by, by that kind of attitude. Yeah, I, I would. I think that. But, I. I said it earlier. I think that the president, as president, should express more sensitivity. You know. Do you okay. think, though, that it's chairman, uh, chairman, do you think, uh, do you think it's fair to tag him an impunity king? Oh, no. That, no, no, no. You don't, you don't think so. Don't think why, not? why not? Why, why not? Why not? Because impunity, he's right? not. He's not. Let's just say he just can't do it. He's limited. Mm. It's, it's not a question of his. Getting I mean, away with president. it because he is president. Gains Don't from you think it. that uh, he has he, he, some kind of power? <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. he has power, yeah. and I'm sure that I wish he could use it more with mm. respect to the points that we have raised. I, of course, you know, I'm, I'm chair of the Commission on Human Rights. Yes. I do have my frustrations do you myself. Think uh, let me ask you yeah. a question. Do you think he's maximizing the power that he has, or he's kind of holding back? Uh, no, no, I think that he can maximize more of his powers with respect to the questions that we are talking about. And I'm talking about extrajudicial killings, mm -hmm. you know, political and civil rights violations. I think he can do much more than that. Okay, so the chairman said that she's not, the chairperson uh, of the Commission of Human Rights says he's not the impunity king. Professor Danny, well, your, your from thoughts? our perspective, he yeah. is, in, well, for one simple reason. The culture of impunity still remains, and no less than ETA admits that uh, President Aquino is also responsible for that. Uh, but, but why do you think it's worse, though? Responsible? Yeah. He, let's put it this way. Okay. You said yes he, a while ago, but we can change your position. No, 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 no don't yeah. say that. It's okay. not a question of changing or not changing. Okay. It's a question of his inability to do something about it. Call it what you want. He lacks willpower. Yes, definitely. Yes. I agree. Or he cannot maximize the powers that he has with respect to that. Or he's not maximizing. Or is it. he not but, willing to maximize? Yes. Uh, Chairman, when you say when you say uh, he, he he lacks the willpower, uh, you're, I, I, what I'm reading is that he's responsible because he doesn't. He's not maximizing his willpower to. He is, of course, he's responsible, but he is not to be, uh, I can't say that he is responsible for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, propagating the culture of impunity. It's just that he is not doing enough to well, be able to, you know, to stop it, to combat well, impunity. I would concede that he's not the mastermind in any of the 145 killings, I suppose. So we can call him a king then? Yeah, but, Maybe no, that, no, no, no. Oh. But the king title mm -hmm. has to do with two words, command mm -hmm. responsibility. Mm -hmm. He is supposed to be the head of state, the head of government, so therefore he should be doing something but, about mm -hmm. ending this particular But you, you're, you're really saying that it's worse than, even if the numbers were are different, less, yeah. uh, the, even if the numbers are less, you're saying that it, things are worse now? Okay, Again, let's look the, at the, the, 
massacre yeah. we, we have to point out happened during before, the time of yeah Gloria, before yeah. before but for this whole thing yeah yeah we're not just talking of the Ampatuan massacre when we talk about the mm -hmm. culture of impunity we're talking yeah. about the Hacienda Luisita massacre which happened yeah. at exactly 10 years ago mm -hmm. we're talking about the fact that there are still political prisoners as Eta mentioned a while ago one of mm -hmm. them happens to be our student Maricon Montajes who's mm -hmm. in who's in jail uh, in Batangas right now mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot Erickson mm. Acosta was imprisoned. Kim Gargar, my friend, yeah. was imprisoned also. And we're, we're just talking of people from the University of the Philippines. What about, what about the others? others? Right. Mm -hmm. 222 extrajudicial killings. The numbers may have been less compared to the Marcos years or the Macapagal What makes Arroyo it worse years. for you? What, what makes it worse? The fact that it happens. Rod, even yeah. if there's only one human rights violation, but does that make it necessarily acceptable. worse? The fact that it still happens, it makes it worse from because the Because the culture of impunity persists and the fact that there mm. is a systemic problem that uh, allows such things that, okay. uh, that allows such things to, to happen. happen. To continue. All right. Yes, to continue. All right, we need to take a short break. Uh, don't go away. When we come back, the uh, final points of our guests and the results of our ongoing online poll on the issue. Stay tuned. You're watching Posing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Ron Depomoceno. Still with us is University of the Philippines College of Mass Communications Associate Dean, Professor Danilo Aro, and the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights, Loretta Eta Rosales. Our question is, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao massacre? Now, I'll, I'd like to uh, quote um, several people no, uh, who made uh, some statements and uh, Mama Eta I'll, uh, mm. I'll quote uh, Felim Kain of the Human Rights Watch, and I'd like, like to ask your opinion and your reaction. As Aquino embarks on the final two years of his presidency, he should recognize that his failure to address the mounting death toll of the well, Maguindanao Massacre or Pantuan Massacre could be the ultimate measure of his six years in office. Do you agree with that? That it's not the ultimate measure? Well, no, no, not necessarily. It's a major mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm in uh, evaluating mm -hmm. his uh, performance with respect to extrajudicial killings and all that. But, you know, I'd put that as against that. I'd say that right now, there's a lot of work that's going on with respect to the peace process, with respect to the MILF. Mm -hmm. You don't have as much killings mm -hmm. and bombings and so on and so forth that you, yeah. we mm -hmm. used to have in the past. Because right now, the president has focused, and that's what I mean by focus, because it has focused on the MILF. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work that's going on now. The Bangsamoro Basic Law is now in Congress. Mm -hmm. But as I always say, I'm not uh, for approval, no? for the government for, to, to set up a new political entity. But as I always say, you don't just rely on that. You have to go down on mm -hmm. the ground and, you know, the healing process and putting good governance in the communities mm -hmm. at the same time that you're working and you lobby mm -hmm. for that sort of thing. Now, that is a major yeah. endeavor. And you Danny, cannot deny that. Your, your thoughts? Otherwise. You think this will be the ultimate measure of uh, the Aquino uh, administration? Well, I would agree that it's not the only measure, but it will be a major factor in assessing mm -hmm. the legacy of the Aquino administration, so all the more that uh, mm -hmm. he really needs to get his act together. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to remember that there are that, that what happened during his administration also includes uh, the Hacienda Luisita massacre mm -hmm. uh, and other controversies. Uh, and the fact that there are extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances that are still happening, mm -hmm. which CHR doesn't deny, mm -hmm. uh, that will be the hallmark of this particular administration, uh, which is ironic in the sense that uh, it's on a platform of the so-called Daang okay. Matuid. Okay. So the road is really under destruction right now. Okay. Yeah, the, now may, may I say something about sure, that? The Hacienda, sure. Luisita Hacienda, we were, uh, the massacre that took place, he and I were both members of the Committee on Human Rights in the House of Representatives. So again, it did not take place during his time. Right now, again, yeah. I will recognize the fact that there's a slow, slow pace Process, yeah. with respect to, you know, solving the crimes mm -hmm. of the killings. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the Hacienda Luisita distribution is concerned, uh, the DAR has officially said that 
it should go to the people. Hmm. Now, whether or not this is being distributed with dispatch is another case. Yeah, but, but the point is, it's moving. Okay. Yeah, but All the that clarification. I am saying is that I, I think that what we should, the way I see it, I'm not saying it's a failure, it's a failure, because it is, it is moving. There well, are, the fact that, you think the, the, the oh, fact, you think that fact well, the massacre, is, well, is, let's is, talk is, about the Shandan Luisita massacre for now. It's true, it happened 10 years ago, 2004, mm -hmm. during the time of Makapagal Arroyo, but even up to now, Eta, you and I agree that justice remains elusive and that after the massacre, there are still incidences President, of harassment and, and intimidation. You. Statement yes. of Chairman Eta says, the fact that it's moving means it's not a failure. Do you agree? The fact that it's moving means that it's just simply moving. Yeah, so, okay? you, you yeah, think so that that's it's not, not, an, that's not an accurate statement. It's not an accurate statement and it's, mm. I think it's unfair for those who are victims of human rights violation that we would come up with statements like that because we have to ensure that justice will be done, swift and fair and mm. decisive justice. I wish it could be that, no? Yes, I, I agree with you, mm. but the reality is on the ground. You know, as they say, concrete yeah. analysis of concrete conditions. You've got a weak state with weak agencies, mm -hmm. so you can understand why okay. it's moving very slowly. So who the is responsible is, for the weak no, state? No, just a, <laughs> let, of okay. course the government is responsible okay. and all Thank that. You. But this is a structural, historical thing. I mean, it is not for us to be satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that... The, when I talk about it's moving, there is distribution of land, which there was not before. Mm. That's a basic question that you have to do. Now, we hasten the distribution of land. Now, it's not just the distribution of land. You need management. You need capacitation of the farmers mm -hmm. so that they can manage their land. You need to go into mechanisms. So okay. it's, it's really not as easy as just uh, denouncing all of this, okay. but it is trying to study the methodologies. This much I want to add to you. Huh? Just to, you look at local government right now, there's a lot of bottom-up budgeting that does a lot of good with local government. I'm not saying all local governments. We denounced some warlords, but now there's a lot of good that's going on in preparations for disaster management, and uh, okay. getting interagencies. Uh, in other okay. words, it's okay. uh, yeah. lang yon. It, the, the point here is uh -huh. simple. Let's look at the facts. In 2010, Noy Noy Aquino made the promise that Hacienda Luisita will be distributed by 2014. And he was very specific in the year. Mm. What's the date today? November 21? And it's not happened yet. It's not, hap it's right. not happened yet. Okay. So this is the thing that let, we have to Let consider. me quote another one. Um, from her, of course, we know this guy, Hermano Coloma, of course. Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> he... Uh, he said this, is it right to say this about the current administration, that, that Pinoy is the impunity king? If we recall, that is one of the platforms for our president when mm. he ran for office, to restore justice in our country. That's true. And that is one of the reasons why our citizens trusted him. And I would say that they continue to trust him. His trust ratings are, are still up there. Yeah. So it, he's questioning why, it, why, why do we call him the uh, impunity king? Well... You, we look at concrete conditions, as Eta said. Mm. The promise was there, but it still remains a promise. Mm. So we don't want an O promise me president, okay? Mm. An OPM president, in mm. the sense that what we want is action. Uh, mm. It's not a lofty ideal. Is it too much to ask for the president to come up with a strong statement denouncing uh, human rights violations, or that he would issue a call to release all so, political prisoners? So you think prisoners? he hasn't? come up with that strong statement of course with, all not. The, with all his statements. Uh, and maybe I should ask Eta, uh, do you think we should release all political prisoners or do we have political prisoners right now? Uh, I, I was talking to some people who are identified with uh, actually during the claims. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Because Jose Maria Sison has mm. filed claims. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then Luby Halandoni. In other words, this is good news because now the state under administration of Noy Noy Aquino has recognized its responsibility and accountability to uh, violations president. committed by Marcos mm -hmm. during the time of the dictatorship. That's positive. Yeah. And no less than the mm -hmm. top communist leaders are the ones that are now you know, filing for claims. And I said, fine, let them. And you visit, I, I visit uh, the Tiamsons, I visit Alan Hasmines, mm -hmm. you know, all of these yeah. uh, people from the... And to me, this is a positive effort where now they are filing for their claims. It's a start. Do you okay. think we should release? Well, the question is, yeah. do, we need, do you think the, we need to release the When they were the asking how many, how many were the political prisoners, and then the, they, those who were, you know, uh, part of the Karapatan, I think they said, mga pito. 
They were talking about pito political prisoners. Seven only. Oh. That, well, that's what they said. To okay, Kenina. assuming for the sake of argument that now, do you think they should be released? Do you think they should be released? Huh? Do you think they should be released now? The political prisoners definitely should be released. I've always worked for. All right. Okay. Thank you. Let's shift the question now. Uh, and then I'll throw this question as to, uh, in a way, to, uh, to uh, put uh, an end, I guess, in this uh, discussion. Okay. It's a wonderful discussion, um, Professor Arau. Which is better in terms of CHR or let's say human rights records, um, the uh, administration of GMA or the administration of President Aquino? Well, again, we don't look at the statistics. Of course, <laughs> when you look at the statistics just as a sole indicator, yeah. then, well, hands down, it will be uh, the Arroyo administration, which is worse in terms I'm of. Numbers, I'm waiting for your however. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. <laughs> you yeah. know me so well. But okay. the problem here is the, prob the systemic uh, social uh, injustice still happens. So he, therefore, he solidified it's not a, it. You're saying that he's kind of cemented and solidified the system. He did not just solidify, he worsened it. Not worsened by it. increasing the number, but yeah, by perpetuating, perpetuating the culture the, of the, impunity. The culture. And the fact that the military, the police, unfortunately, are now more brazen uh, than before. Mm -hmm. Now, remember that these are just simply recorded human rights violations. In the countryside, as ETA is aware, there's a possibility that the human rights violations could be more in the same way that mm -hmm. the Patuan massacre mm -hmm. could have more victims. It just so happens that we were only able to recover 58 bodies. Okay. The news you on the ground is that it's more than 70. Okay. For Chair that, huh? Chairwoman? Yeah, because, my yes. goodness, you're seeing the military during the time of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo is uh, better than the military under Noy Noy Aquino. For heaven's sakes, you're comparing, you know, the General Esperon was chief of staff during that time when it was at its peak. And there was a military offensive, and it was a militarist mindset in addressing the problems yeah, but of insurgency. And I'm talking about the chief, former chief of staff, uh, Manny Bautista, with whom I relate to, and we talk about the peace process, and he came up with ETA, it's a difficult thing, but how can we, in fact, work it out so that the solutions become political the problem is we're rather allowing... than military? Yeah, no, but... Listen to me. Yeah, okay. I am saying that we do this. So yeah. let us, to me, let us kind of open our minds a bit and find out. It's, you know, it's the easiest thing to, you know, denounce. It's we're so allowing easy to denounce. The promotion. But when, when we look at yeah. the bureaucracy, when we look at some of the things that are going on and the problems that have to be encountered, the obstacles, then we become a little more circumspect. Okay, we need to uh, the promotion mm. of human rights violators. Some soldiers have been pro uh, accused of human rights violations have been promoted. Yeah. So okay. that's the problem. For At me. this point, unfortunately, I, th yeah. I wish we had another hour, no? But yeah. I need uh, I need to conclude this uh, discussion. Yes. So at this point, I'd like to ask uh, each of you to uh, to say your final words to our viewers, yeah. who obviously will benefit from from this discussion, and to, so that they can form their own judgment. Uh, I'll start with you, Professor Aro. Okay. The Ampatuan massacre, ladies and gentlemen, is just a reflection of the culture of impunity that's happening in the country. It's good that ETA and I agree that there is a culture of impunity and that uh, the president himself is responsible for it. It's the extent of impunity that I think is the subject of uh, more discussion and more debates in the future. But what we have to remember here, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have to fight. We can't just trust the government to do its job because definitely it's not doing its job. It is through our concerted efforts, or what we call in Filipino, asama-samang pagkilos, that we can be able to ensure that meaningful change will happen and that finally justice will be served. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor mm -hmm. Danny Arrow. Thank you very much, and, Danny. Uh, chair, and, and chair, <laughs> Chairperson, yeah, yeah, Chairperson yeah. Uh, yes. Eta Rosales. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I agree that there is a climate of impunity, but I do not agree that the, the uh, president is responsible solely for this. This is a historical structural problem. And yes, he has been very limited. And I mean, you know, he has his limitations. And you and I can criticize. But let us criticize constructively. Let us engage this. And what I can say is, um, it's not one or the other. It has to be all stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I find like the military, Navy intelligence, with the help of the NBI, were finally able to arrest Palparan. Thank God for that. Let's work together to ensure that Palparan gets his fair day in court, mm -hmm. including Binayog and all other guys who are culprits. And let us find out how the government can also help improve itself. All right. Yeah. Then, Thank and you very I, much. I always say that I think that if all of us are, you know, the, the solution to the problem is never exclusive 
only this or that. No, it has to be all stakeholders involved. Okay, Chair. Chairperson Etta, thank you so much. Uh, so thank you to our guests, uh, UP Professor Danilo Arau and CHR Chairperson Ms. Etta <laughs> Rosales. Now let's see the results of our online poll. We ask you, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao massacre? Those who answered yes, 80%. Those who answered no, 20%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rodney Pomoseno. Good night. God bless. University of the Philippines College of Mass Communication Associate Dean, Professor Danilo Arau. Danny, Professor Danny, good evening. Yes, hey, good evening. Yeah, welcome back and uh, thank you for joining us again here on the show. Yeah. Um, your initial thoughts regarding this debate question. Do you think the government uh, is failing uh, in, the, in the handling of the Maguindanao massacre case? Definitely, it is failing. Uh, it's good that you invited me, even if I'm not a lawyer, mm -hmm. because from a non-lawyer's perspective, mm -hmm. from a journalism educator's perspective, I can tell you that the culture of, of impunity remains mm -hmm. and that there are still 25 journalists killed since mm -hmm. uh, Aquino assumed office in 2010. Mm -hmm. So that's about six journalists being killed every year. Mm -hmm. And these are work-related killings. So when we talk about the Maguindanao massacre, we have to look at the context in which it operates. Mm -hmm. So the brazenness of murder, still happens. And there are 222 extrajudicial killings uh, that happened since 2010 also. Mm -hmm. So it's more than just the issue of whether or not the wheels of justice are turning slowly or much slower than expected because it's the culture of impunity that should be the focus of our discussion here. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, Professor Arrow. On the opposing side is the chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights. In 2009, the bloodiest election-related massacre and the single deadliest event for journalists in history happened in Maguindanao. 58 people were slaughtered, including 32 journalists. After the carnage, they were buried in a prepared excavation, including their vehicles. The Philippines was placed third as the most dangerous country for journalists after war-torn Iraq and Syria. President Aquino vowed to serve justice. However, after five years, it has remained elusive. Worse, less than a week before the fifth anniversary of the so-called Ampatuan massacre, two witnesses were silenced by bullets in Sharif Agua. Karapatan reports there are at least 152 victims of extrajudicial killings, 18 victims of enforced disappearances, and thousands more victims of other forms of human rights violations. Zero. Human rights groups blame the weak courts and the Aquino administration that crime perpetrators go unpunished, contributing to the chilling climate of fear and the culture of injustice. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. Five years since the gruesome election-related killing that also slaughtered 32 journalists known as the Maguindanao Massacre. No single suspect is punished to date. So we ask tonight, is the government failing to address the Maguindanao Massacre case? Good evening, I'm Rodney Pomoseno, and this is Opposing Views. All right, joining us tonight in our discussion is... Mm -hmm. Pero nakakulong sila. All right. no, it's not as if they are at large. And I'm talking about the principal 
uh, actors. All right. Okay. So let's start off uh, now. It's been five years, as yeah, we mentioned. That's good. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk about uh, your, I guess, your first, your personal assessment. No, your, I guess, your personal assessment of satisfaction. Well, okay. Um, let's, let's try uh, yeah. to quantify uh, yeah. what uh, Eta said a while ago regarding mm -hmm. the sheer number of those who are accused. Well, the number of dead, we all know, it's mm -hmm. fifty-eight, right? Yes. Now we're talking of one hundred ninety-four who are accused of the murder, mm -hmm. uh, but only a slight majority is in jail. There are about 84 or 85 who are still at large right now, as we speak. Mm -hmm. And the wheels of justice are sometimes turning toward the wrong direction because mm -hmm. 41, 41, mm -hmm. is, uh, 41 of the uh, accused are actually granted bail, although the bail is set at around 11 million pesos yeah. at, at the cost of 200,000 per yeah. count of murder. Yeah. So it's really quite baffling. You have, you have a problem with that? With the, the Definitely, I have a problem with that because we're talking of brazen murder. Right, uh, Loretta Eta Rosales. Ma'am, good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, th thank you for joining us. Uh, Ma'am, uh, your thoughts, your initial reaction on, on this question. I think the government is failing uh, regarding this case. Am I supposed to oppose him? <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, yes. put it this way. Apparently, it does look like nothing's happening because there's no conviction. After yes. five years, there's no conviction. Mm -hmm. So people are impatient. Ano nga ba nangyayari? Mm -hmm. But let's look at it first. No? Mm -hmm. It's a difficult problem. There are so many accused and uh, there are so many who are victims. And there is a flawed criminal justice system before us. Mm -hmm. So these are the factors that we have to consider. Now, I'm not going to say it's a total failure. I will say that it is apparently failing because after five years, there has yet been no conviction. Mm -hmm. But there are those that have already been uh, arrested and are in jail. The principal suspects are actually in jail. Mm -hmm. We are just waiting for them to be prosecuted and finally convicted.